we're going to talk about communication styles. We talked about establishing rapport and the importance of that last week. The fact that we all have the ability to do it to varying degrees and how important it is in relationship. So today we want to break that down into what some general categories of communication style are so that you can recognize them in conversation, so that you can see in conversation where there may be a disconnect between you and the other person. And then hopefully you've got in your toolbox, in your communication toolbox, the ability to adapt, to make some subtle, small adaptations, to bring the conversation into rapport so you're meeting them on their on their playing field, if you will, or giving them the opportunity to communicate in their comfort zone. We've all got a natural communication style. We've got that comfort zone where we feel safe, secure, uh, where, where we naturally live and we're, we're in our wheelhouse, if you will. We all have that. And at the edges of that comfort zone, we start to get uncomfortable. We start to get a little bit, our attention goes away from the content of, that we're dealing with, the problem we're talking about, and maybe the other person. And it goes more towards our own sense of security, our sense of stability, and what we're working on, which is which diminishes the effectiveness of the conversation. So recognizing when we are in our comfort zone and where our comfort zone is, is the important step number one. Step number two becomes recognizing, okay, if that's if we hold that to be true, then there are other people in the world and they've got their comfort zones as well. They've got their area where they prefer to communicate within. And the key, the third and most important piece here is that we make some adaptation. We have we have the willingness to adapt to communicate with that other person in the style where they feel comfortable so that we can build and establish that rapport. The analogy that I've used before is that if you have the if you were trilingual, you could speak French, Spanish and English and you walked into a room of predominantly French speakers and you wanted to communicate effectively with them. What's your first choice? What would you pick? French, of course. French, you would you would pick their language and the language that they would feel comfortable. So the distinctions within our own language uh, are, are 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 different than those language and textual uh, distinctions. These are the nonverbal cues, the behavioral cues, the volume, the pace, the tone, and the physiology that we use when we communicate. And those are the things that make up communication styles, which we want to get deeper into, and we'll talk about in a little bit. And I guess it's also understanding a little bit about that it's uh, not always about us because <laughs> yeah. when you jump into a conversation, you just jump in. Right. It's me. Here I am for whatever I am. And there is no wrong answer there. But sure. this is me. And this is this is a different approach. This is let me learn a little bit about you. And by learning that I can help us communicate better. Yeah, it, it's about it is for most of us where we are self-centered and we're focused on our attention and things that we want. But when we come together to communicate, there's usually a reason for that. There's a purpose. There's an outcome in mind. And if you go back and remember conversations that count, if you know what your outcome is, then adaptation between you and the other person and recognizing that you want that other person to come along and to gain a collaborative conversation as opposed to just a one way or a lecture or, a, you know, a, a clubbing, if you will, in some cases. Um, if you're looking for that person to come along and gain and get to that end point collectively and collaboratively, then you want to facilitate that to the best of your ability. That's what the rapport does for you so that when we get there, we got there together. It wasn't your thing or their thing. It was our thing. And that type of connection, when you do that on a regular basis, right, it becomes even in a situation where you're the boss and this is the end result that's going to be coming, right? You're the owner and you know we need to increase sales by 15% then that's the end game. We have to get there. But it's one thing to walk into that person and club them on the head and say 15% is what we're going to do or to engage them in a conversation and get them committed to that outcome through their own uh, initiative by seeing and recognizing what their value is going to be by getting there as well. So your ability to connect and communicate with them is what gets them on board as opposed to trying to push rope as the old analogy goes or herd cats you're inspiring people to do the things that that need to be done for the sake of the organization. And that has a that that's communication style, not all day long, but most of the most of the time is going to help you do that dramatically.